Welcome to This Old App, a podcast about learning, coding, smashing stuff together, breaking things apart, startups, failing, winning, and any other buzzwords we can think of. Hey, Don. Um, Great. So this has been an interesting week in that I took on a new client. That client yeah. is on Drupal, which is okay. a system that we both used a lot five years, four years ago, five years ago. Man, Drupal 7 has been around a while. It's been around a long time. And it was really, it's an inherit, I'm inheriting an existing site. And that site um, is well trafficked, well used sure. by its, um, by the client. And I don't want to talk too much about the site. The site's actually, I thought, has been done really well. It doesn't look like there's a ton of customization in it as compared to the people that developed it, um, use the modules and the code bases in a certain way. But I think what I really have learned is the, the back end hosting of Drupal and WordPress over the last five to six years has advanced so much. And the reason I left Drupal and stayed away from WordPress was I hated the deployment picture, the deployment story, the For sure. the CI, the continuous integration, the lack of source control that was worth a crap. I'm using Pantheon. I've only this is the first time I've used Pantheon versus WordPress engine. And man, I love it. <laughs> I just yeah. sit there looking at Pantheon and what they set up for their user base. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. This is how yeah. these systems should always have been built and used. I've used, I used WordPress engine first over the last three to four years with word because when I was at DevMind, when I was at DevMind, we had a client that wanted to, they needed to have a high production site up really fast. And WP Engine had just popped up and they had all of these goals that they were going to build out for their platform. And I just said, these are the folks you need to be attached to. And so we built a site for, the, for a client really fast on WordPress Engine. And so from that point on, I pretty much said, anyone that wants me to work on WordPress Engine or on, on uh, WordPress needs to use a platform like no more cPanel no more host gator, no more cheap $10 a month hosting. Like you need to, to pony up some money for a good back end to make this, to get away from what I consider the worst part of WordPress, pushing to production or right. F, FTP to production. Yep. And so WordPress engine is my experience first experience with it and I've always been in love with it and it wasn't until this client brought on their brought on Pantheon that I was like whoa game changer these folks I think are doing it even better I don't right. know what is your experience with either of these two platforms so when I was at um, when I was at media current many years ago um, which is a Drupal agency um, that was about the time Pantheon was really starting to ramp up. Um, that was probably in their first couple of years. And when we could, we would push clients towards Pantheon for, for the reasons we're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, which is uh, if you use Pantheon, you know, you won't need us. You won't need as much as of our time later on to, to get, do the minor upgrades to manage your server. You won't need someone to manage your server. You're paying for that service. Um, and, and for Aspire to you, um, we put our marketing site on WP engine. Um, and it pretty much just sits there and runs. And I get, I get an email every few months saying, by the way, um, you're running at a certain version of WordPress and you have to be running at this version in order to get some security things that we feel you have to have. Yeah. 
So we're going to be upgrading this here in the next three weeks. We'd really love it if you'd come in and run um, run a test uh, upgrade to make sure it works before we force the upgrade. Yeah. Um, which is, that's huge. Yep. That's, that, 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 that's not a bad thing that they're forcing me to do that. That's a great thing that, because otherwise it, it's just one of those things that's just going to fall by the wayside. Um, and every time I've gone in, I've taken a snapshot. I've said run upgrade. Um, it runs it and everything continues to work just perfect. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sure the time will come when I'll hit, I'll run one of those upgrades and something will happen and more work will be involved. Um, but it's certainly the, the WP engine experience has certainly made WordPress maintenance a lot easier. Um, and I know Pantheon does it the same way. I, I, I still have a lot of friends in the Drupal community and, and they, um, they pretty much swear by Pantheon. Yes, they can run the servers themselves, but if they can get a client to pay for Pantheon, then that's easily the way to do it. Oh, yeah. Like, my experience this week was the ability to, I mean, one, I can basically destroy the entire site to my heart's content on a development version and then instantly just say, hey, erase that give me back a production and copy over what i just messed right. up and i never right. like i had that on local but it's it still involves me i didn't have any type of not just a gui but even a command line like i guess i could use drush to do this stuff too but i don't even want to i'm just like why not just click these right. buttons and um what i liked the hardest thing about updating drupal 7 was Cora upgrades still didn't have an automated procedure. So I would have to go in and SFTP a bunch like the the code and kind of remove like everything but the sites folder, the where you typically put your extensions and custom changes and modules. And in this case, it was like all I did was git pull from the Drupal 7 master of Pantheon, it replaced all just the right stuff. And then boom, I was, I switched, like I was done. I was, the core yeah. upgrade was done. And yeah. then I was able to go in and manually update the various modules that needed it. And that was like the peace of mind I had on that process that I was going to then be able to, to move it into the test environment. And I feel like WP engine and Pantheon have both have staging servers, which is terrific, but I feel like Pantheon is doing it better because you have the ability on WordPress engine to copy from the, the from the dev to the staging to the production. And you can also go back. But Pantheon just kind of said, you know what, let's just do it where you work in dev, push to a testing, like they put test in the middle, and then you can always swap code between dev and test from both live, like testing is a middle ground just for you to bring the database side of, of live into a middle ground with the code you've changed on dev. And yeah. you can you can do that in... WP engine, but they don't have a discipline around it with their, um, with the GUI. The GUI doesn't have that kind of, this is how we think you should do it. And at the end of the day, when all I'm trying to really do is, is front end work and module admin changes on Drupal. And I don't want to think about the DevOps. I like the fact that Pantheon just said, well, this is how we think you should do it. I appreciated that more, even though, believe me, I've been, touting WP engine to every WordPress person for a while, but I never experienced that in Drupal. And so it was just a huge like win for what I have experienced. Um, I think the, what was the other, Oh, so the other thing that I did, this is beside Pantheon, but I love it is I started using Cypress 
and I set up a bunch of integration tests for the site. And I ran them against the dev environment URL and it, everything passed. And I ran it against the testing and then I ran it against production. Right. And I, and it takes about two to three minutes to run. I'm only cover. I only have about 50% coverage because this is a pretty big site. But the fact that I can just, the fact that I can run my own test suite against all three environments and just feel like I have a consistent pattern of, um, acceptance across the three very quickly versus the old good old, let me click on a bunch of links and hope the rest of it. I, like there's no butterfly effects in here. Right. I like that too. Um, yeah, like I feel like if you, and so I'm actually talking to another client about a WordPress project. And as soon as we asked, what are you using for hosting? And they're like, oh, we do our own hosting. We have our own servers. I just thought, oh, shit. Like, I was yeah. just like, I don't really want to do it this way. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I really feel like if if you're out there slaving away at the Drupal and WordPress worlds and the DevOps is, has not been your friend, and you haven't looked at WP Engine, I think it really behooves you to look at both WP Engine and Pantheon. Well, what, um, so, so let's talk about that for a minute. If you, if you're going to, uh, if you're being hired on to, uh, to a Drupal or WordPress project, um, yeah. is it, how easy is the conversation of, Listen, I, I hear you want your hosting it yourself. Um, that costs you X amount of dollars per month plus X amount of dollars of my time in setting all this up versus using Pantheon, um, which is going to be more expensive per month, but my time is going to be less and your time six and 12 months from now is going to be less. It's, it sounds like a compelling argument. Oh, it depends if you're talking to the CEO or the CTO. Okay. Because when you talk to the CEO, I can tell them over the long haul, you don't need to hire a DevOps person. You don't need to hire this tech person. You don't need to hire uh, these things are your what you get for a monthly hundred dollar plus a month is a huge bargain for all that you get out of the hosting environment of Pantheon or, or a WP engine. Right. But if I talk to a CTO or the server guy, the server person at this company, he or she may say, I don't want to be replaced by your solution. Like, their job security is based upon the fact that the server farm is what they put up. I guess. Yeah. And that's the problem I've always seen. Like, I can't tell you why I, I can't see any reason why there's a value in a person bouncing up their own server farm for W WordPress or Drupal these days with these two, with these tools available. It doesn't make sense. Right. Other than, well, they don't need me if I use those. That's the only thing I can think of. And I, as a consultant, I never, really, in the consultant's role, my job is never to make companies dependent on me for the long haul. Um, that's not why people hire me. People hire me so that I can solve their problems and in theory be the solutions are maintainable without paying the rate over a full employee salary over the time. Right. But if I'm working at a company and I put up a bunch of servers, that isn't for that's not great for job security. If all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you don't need to pay me because you're paying Pantheon to do all the stuff I used to do. Yeah, I, it, but it, 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 how many companies is the CTO's job only running the server firm? I mean, I guess. I guess there are some. I'm, well, I, I said where that is, but. I said CTO, but I should. I really, it's it's really the head IT person. Yeah, yeah whoever's in charge <laughs> of IT. Yeah, 
Um, yeah. It just sounds unless they're unless they are server people and not unless they're hardware people and not software people. That that just sounds like that's even an easy conversation for them to have about what they could, what they could be doing instead. Um, yeah. But interesting. Okay. Um, trying to think what else, like the, the other benefits, really good logging. So you could see the kind of logs you'd have to pull up on your own back end. Um, the domain set up with, HTD with SSL that hooks in with Lettuce um, or Let's Encrypt is set up pretty well. The backup system is stellar on Pantheon, like even better, I think, than um, WordPress Engine last I looked. You can backup to do scheduling. I was able to create backups with a, with a single button click. I had a backup at the minute I wanted it. And then it will store it for a month or six months. And that's all you pretty much need. If you want to, you can download everything to your own environment. That's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Security is there's new, you can actually put new relic. You can look at new relic um, documentation reporting, but my experience with new relic has always been, wow, lots of data. I can't really take the time to figure out. So um, I haven't gone that deep. And then they don't have any kind of performance issues to look at, but apparently that's there and available. Um, uh, one other one other that. benefit is, and 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 this this can be abused to a degree, um, but uh, have you had any experience with Pantheon support to this point? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, uh, what what I find, especially because we'll we'll abuse this a little sometimes on Heroku. Um, if we're having a problem and we're just not real sure, we'll just send Heroku support a, a, a ticket and say, Hey, we're having this problem. What do you guys think? And, yeah. and it's not, most of the time it's not their problem. Um, but most of the time we get back an answer saying, yeah, not our problem, but here's, here's what we think it is. And here's how you can fix it. Um, so using these managed services gets you that level of expertise um, to help nudge you in the right direction and and sometimes for free. Um, and sometimes it's more of a case of they'll send back a note saying, yeah, here's the problem. It's not something we cover in our basic plan or whatever plan you have, but we can help you out for X amount. Um, it's, it's one of those things about getting additional help. It also speeds up the, your ability to get things done in the sense that like my, the first issue I had was there was a security um, on, on a specific site. There was a security uh, change that prevented me from getting into the site. It was basic auth. It was on the development side and they were doing that just to prevent like Google or any other indexer from treating that site as live. And I understood why they were doing it, but the credentials I had been given did not have this basic auth security layer. And so I was unable to at all get into the site on the dev side. And I reached out to the, um, I reached out to the court, to the people at uh, Pantheon to say, by the way, on your side, this basic off has been turned off, but it's actually turned on and I can't get around it. And they looked at it and they're like, yeah, this is weird. And finally they actually, I think they went into the back end and found someone is using a module to do it. Not, they're not using our system to do it. Right. And then it, then I had to go straight to the client and go, uh, we need a way to get around this. And they were like, oh, there's a password. I'm like, okay. But I couldn't ask, it was like, because of the time, it was like 11 p.m. at night, I couldn't ask the client. And I used both mechanisms to get to the answer. And I didn't, it was like, yeah, it sucked for me to be asking Pantheon support this question. But it was one that, I wasn't convinced the client would know because the client that I work with 
I'm, a, I'm replacing the previous tech person there. And so it was one of those things where um, I, I don't know what the client knows at this point. Right. But yeah, like I do, I, I've sent support requests to Heroku when I get stuck. I tend to, I always feel better when the first layer of support can't answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> because I feel like, oh, I shouldn't, if they can't figure this out at all, or they don't just point me to some documentation that solved the problem. I mean, I did enough research before I reached out to them. Right, right. And so I usually send questions to Heroku and WP Engine and Pantheon that it takes a more advanced technical person and go, this is what I think is going on. And But they always come through. I've never had experience with any of the those three managed hosts where I felt like their support didn't put me on the right path. Yeah. I'm trying to think and, and not to, not to throw someone under the bus, but I know there's been uh, a service I've used that, that pretty much shut down the question. Um, So you, the both, both experiences can happen, but I, that, that's a fair stance for them to have as well. Um, But to be fair, it's also a stance of like, okay, if you're not going to help me, that's fine. Um, if a competing service comes along, I might take a look at it. Um, so at the end of the day, it's a, it's a customer service thing that it's, it's a burden that they take on. Yeah. So, uh, oh, the, the other thing that's really nice, I, I can't speak for WP engine doing this. Um, but there is a, there's like an audit process on Pantheon that does best practices for Drupal. So if you go through, it'll talk about, Hey, this is your database usage here. Here's a section on best practices and what we, what Drupal recommends you do versus what you're doing. Um, it tells you about cache settings which of course from a speed standpoint is good. And there's a lot of websites out there that don't have caching turned on because the developer hated it, not seeing their changes. And then they don't turn it back off when they go live. Right. Um, It tells you about all of your uh, modules and security issues that may be around that. It, I just like how I don't go to Pantheon or WP engine wanting other features. Like I can't sit and go, it'd be really nice if they added this. I'm like, all I can think about is how painful the backend work was, especially with a system like Drupal, where you were, some of your configuration was stored in the database. So if you update things, you have them both in your code and both in the database. And that makes for a really hard deployment process. Yeah without running into problems. And I feel like they nailed it so well with these. This is what I, this is what I want in a hosting platform for anything I do, but especially for these CMS platforms that were always designed to be low maintenance, um, high usage on the, on the content management side. Right. So, yeah, like this, I feel like I can definitely tout the praises of both of these platforms. And now I would say right now, Pantheon has really stepped up the game for me. And now when I go back to WordPress engine, I'll have to see like, how are they doing compared to this? Because I had no idea Pantheon was this advanced. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm a big fan as well. Uh, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> we, th- I think... I think since the first episode we've done of this podcast, we've been we've been fans of of services like this. I think our first episode we talked about Heroku, um, so it, it 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 just makes life easier. Well, the other part of it is it makes life affordable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we neither of us like we talked on a CTO Think episode about hiring. And you're having to hire someone or needing or being able to hire someone, but you're not hiring senior level dev. You have a budget for a certain level. 
if we didn't have all of these services out there to lean on, we're building it all this stuff from scratch. You can't yeah. do that with junior devs. You have no, to like, and and you you you're hiring an extra DevOps person for more than what yeah. you're paying these services. So it, it you can't at the scale. End of the day, it just makes sense. Yeah, and it, it's it's just what it what's make as an end as if you're going to go down the indie developer or the CTO of a small business with a small team and a limited budget, the constraints factor. I feel like these host, these managed hosting providers makes for an affordable um, enabler for you to keep your team small. Right. Right. And And go ahead. There's just, there's a lot of value in that is all I'm saying. Yeah. We, uh, we, you and I were actually having a conversation last night about, um, about this, this showing up in serverless as well, um, yeah. where, where this type of service is starting to show up there. Um, there there's, a, there's a private beta for a company called Begin um, that, that's doing the same thing for serverless. So um, it's one of those things that you just continue to um, see, and, and we're big fans of it because it just makes life easier. And, and more affordable. So. so very good. We'll continue to buy people services. Come sell them to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I've, I've, I feel like we'll end up talking about the server, the managed serverless soon, because it's a weird, it's a very interesting approach. Another abstraction of an abstraction. Yeah. I mean, Heroku was an abstraction of an abstraction, but now serverless was supposed to be the ultimate abstraction. And now there's someone attempting to do that. And I, um, yeah, I, I feel like there's another story behind that we can talk about in the yeah. future. All right. Well, cool. Very good. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll revisit this topic at some point in the future because we, we keep coming back to liking these services. Yep. All right. Sounds All good. Right. See ya. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening to this old app. Show notes and previous episodes can be found on our website at www.thisoldapp.online. Reviews on Apple iTunes are always appreciated and help promote the show. For questions, comments, or things you would like to hear on future shows, please email us at hello at thisoldapp.online. Show music is Guns Blazing by Fab Claxton, licensed by Pond5. Voiceover work by makingvoices.com. You'll hear from us soon.